the Osmo Pocket versus the Feutech G6 Plus. Two very different devices that set out to achieve the same thing, stabilized footage. So let's see how they compare. This is the setup. On the G6 Plus, I have a perfectly balanced RX100 Mark V and bolted just in front of that is the Osmo Pocket in a protective case. And if you want to know more about the case or anything else in this video, there's more info and links in the description. First up is a simple walking test along a straight road. They're both off to a good start. The Osmo Pocket is very solid and the G6 Plus is wobbling a tiny bit on the x-axis, but it's not too bad. The Osmo is keeping the horizon perfectly locked in, while the G6 is beginning to lose it just slightly. Next I do the same test with a wide angle lens on the Osmo Pocket to see if that makes it even smoother. Although with how the Osmo is performing here, it would be hard to imagine it being even more stable than this. They're both doing a good job of keeping the horizon level but the Osmo has the edge again. Now for a run test. The G6 Plus is drifting slightly to the right on the Z axis. On the turn, the Osmo remains locked in like a machine but the G6 is really struggling now. It's completely lost the horizon. And loses it again. That's unfortunate. The next test is for field of view, and this is more of a comparison between the Osmo Pocket and the RX100 Mark V, but it should show you if you can get a similar result using just the Osmo Pocket, and you don't want to go to the hassle of setting up a larger gimbal rig, or you don't have $1,500 to spend. The first thing to note is that the G6 Plus looks much more level than the Osmo, but in reality it's the shed that's not level. The Osmo is actually perfectly level, but unfortunately it has no roll adjustment so I can't align it with the roof of the shed, whereas the G6 Plus does have a roll adjustment switch, so I was able to adjust it a few degrees to create the appearance of a level shot. As for the field of view, the RX100 has the wider shot here, it also has a more pleasing auto exposure in this scene. But with some very basic tweaks, the Osmo footage can be fixed in post. Or what I should have done is reduce the Osmo's exposure compensation a few clicks when I was recording this footage. But with such a tiny screen, that can be hard to judge in bright sunlight. Now let's look at the same scene with the wide angle lens added to the Osmo Pocket and see if I can get a similar look. This time the Osmo actually gives a wider field of view than the RX100, which is really cool. But the RX100 is sharper and looks nicer overall. But still, the tiny little Osmo with a tiny little lens magnetically stuck to it is doing such an impressive job. And if you're interested, the wide angle lens I'm using here is the new Ulanzi Mark II, which I believe is the same lens or an exact copy of the Freewell one. I'll put some links in the description and I'll be uploading a full review of this lens and comparing it to the old version. So if you're subscribed to the channel, look out for that in the next few days. So what do I think of the Feutech G6 Plus when compared to the Osmo Pocket? Well, I'm a little bit disappointed in the G6 Plus to tell you the truth. I'm going to keep it because it is a useful piece of gear to have in my arsenal but it has some issues. It loses the horizon a lot, and often it doesn't track straight ahead, slowly drifting to the left or right while I'm recording. And this even happens sometimes when it's just sitting on a table. It'll just drift. Maybe some of these things will be fixed with future firmware, so I remain hopeful for that. And in the meantime, as I said, it's still useful to me. It allows me to use any of my cameras with any of my lenses, and this gives me more freedom to get certain shots. It also means I can get much better indoor footage, as the Osmo struggles with lower light and has a limited field of view in, in stock form. The G6 Plus also has a cool trick called Inception Mode, which I don't think I'll ever use in a serious way, 
but it's kind of fun to mess around with. The Osmo Pocket, on the other hand, is rock solid. It never drifts and it keeps the horizon locked tight. It's almost too locked in sometimes. There's no setup process at all, whereas setting up the G6 Plus requires time to balance the camera perfectly and then you have this big heavy device in your hand. And when you want to swap lenses, you have to rebalance the gimbal again every time. Comparing these two devices just makes me appreciate what a marvel of engineering the Osmo Pocket really is. If only they can make a bigger one with a one inch sensor and interchangeable lenses. Imagine that. I think it would be the end of all other gimbals for most enthusiasts and hobbyists like me. If you think I'm doing something wrong with the G6 Plus, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Or if you have any questions about my experience with either of these two products, fire away. I always enjoy discussing these things in the comment section because some of you are really quite knowledgeable and I usually learn something. And some of you are just flat out nuts. And that can be kind of fun too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.